time. A shadow on a dial. The striking of a clock. The running of the sand. Days and nights. Summer and winter. Months. Years. Centuries. Time. It's yesterday's follow us and direct us and give character and force and meaning to the present. The year was 1831. The country was a nation of 24 states. Andrew Jackson was the president, just the seventh man ever to hold the office. The country was young and strong and growing. In Philadelphia, a 37-year-old silversmith named Joseph Elkington decided that same year, 1831, to start his own business. And so began the company of Joseph Elkington, manufacturer of soap and candles. In a letter to her brother, the daughter of Joseph Elkington discloses some of the common problems that were part of running a business in the early years. Things have gone on pretty much in their usual routine since you left. The boiler hasn't blown up yet, which may be a comfort to Josie. Running a business in 1831 wasn't easy, but despite the difficulties, the soap and candle business of Joseph Elkington prospered. In a letter in 1851, Joseph Elkington, a Quaker, wrote to his son, My account of the business is very satisfactory, and have no doubt thou wilt be able to get along to thy own satisfaction, and mine also, so thou continues to dwell under a proper concern for the best things. 1851. The gold rush was on in California. Millard Fillmore was president. And Joseph Elkington's company employed a total of four men. The demand for soap and candles was high in 1851. We are selling the soap quite as fast as we are making it, and I do not know of having made any bad sale. Four years later, in 1856, the founder took his son, Joseph S. Elkington, into the firm. The name of the company was appropriately changed to Joseph Elkington and Son. By the late 1850s, the company's soap line was being changed and expanded. Joseph Elkington, now in his early 60s, was still looking for better ways to improve his product. He wrote to his son, Joseph, I think it will be well to ascertain what can be done with fancy soap making in regard to the oil thou spoke of. The oil thou spoke of was actually something discovered by Joseph Elkington's other son, Thomas. Thomas Elkington was a thoughtful young man, eager to learn, who lent a hand to his father's business now and then. One day, while reading a German scientific journal, Thomas read an article about soluble glass, Interested, he set about investigating and experimenting on his own. And what Thomas was learning about was something called silicate of soda. With much prodding from Thomas, the company of Joseph Elkington and Son, soap makers, decided to spend some of its profits from the soap and candle company on new machinery to manufacture this silicate of soda. This was a risky thing to do, particularly for 1860. In January 1861, just a few months before Abraham Lincoln's inauguration and the attack on Fort Sumter by the South Carolina militia, the first recorded sale of the new silicate product was made. But then came the war. 1862. Abraham Lincoln issues the Emancipation Proclamation. There are major Civil War battles at Shiloh, Bull Run, and Fredericksburg. And Joseph Elkington, founder of the company, retires. His sons, Joseph S. and Thomas Elkington, take over. But the war between the states made business difficult for the young Elkingtons. Thomas wrote his brother later that year. Business is rather dull. At such a rate, I'm glad everyone is working by the job. And his brother had problems of his own, keeping the furnaces and boilers operating. A steam boiler exploded with a noise like a cannon. The war disrupted the 12 Elkington employees, 
reduced odors, and supplies of rosin, a primary ingredient in soap, were cut off from the South. However, the resourceful brothers continued to reformulate soaps, substituting silicate for rosin. In 1864, a separate new works for manufacturing silicates was established by the Elkintons. The company traded under the name Philadelphia Quartz Company. Business got off to, well, a slow start. We continue to be very busy doing nothing. April 9, 1865. Terms were signed at the courthouse in Appomattox, Virginia, and business began to improve for Philadelphia Quartz Company. One reason was the ending of the war. The other reason was Charles W. Gowdy. Charles Gowdy was an enterprising Iowa soap maker who bought large quantities of silicate from the Elkintons. The brothers sought to expand their market by hiring Charles Gowdy to teach manufacturers the use of silicate in soap. His sales method started PQ on the important course of educating its customers and greatly expanded the use of silicates in soap making and other markets. At the end of the 1800s, the main use of silicates was still as an ingredient for laundry soaps, but other uses for silicates were being discovered rapidly. Corrugated boxes for shipping where silicates were used as an adhesive, the use of silicates for bonding laminated fiber sheets and wallboards. 1904, Teddy Roosevelt was the president, and the company finally decided to stop manufacturing soap entirely and concentrate its full energies on the manufacturing and development of silicate. The name Philadelphia Quartz Company was incorporated that same year. During the first part of the 20th century, the Philadelphia Quartz Company, now under the leadership of third generation William T. Elkington, expanded more than during any previous era. What set PQ apart as a company at this time, besides its people, was its dedication to the development of silicates. In 1928, a PQ chemist named James Vale wrote what remains today the definitive treatise on the application of sodium silicates. And new applications brought with them new markets and new manufacturing plants for PQ. Plants were established in Jeffersonville, Kansas City, Berkeley, Rawway, St. Louis, Utica, Baltimore, and Los Angeles. In 1931, a Canadian company was also formed, National Silicates Limited, with headquarters in Toronto. Then came the 30s, the golden era of radio, the Depression years, and for Philadelphia Quartz Company, a decade of discovery. In the 30s, a new kind of soluble silicate called metasilicate was invented by PQ. The trade name was Metso and hundreds of additional markets for sodium silicate evolved from this discovery. The 40s brought with them a second world war and a heavier demand than ever before on the company's ability to deliver more and more of its silicate products. In a message to employees, Vice President of Finance James Norton commented, the mind is overwhelmed by the flood of developments that seem to submerge the past. The company under the leadership of Thomas Elkington in the late 50s and 60s saw expansion, development of new products, and the laying of plans for the future. Important internal changes were begun. Sales and production were tightly linked. International business was emphasized. New managers and new skills were recruited into the company. By the beginning of 1970, PQ and its affiliates had 16 plants in cities around the United States, in Canada, and Mexico. Company sales that year totaled $35 million. Under the leadership of company chairman Morris Evans and president Paul Staley, the decade's growth and diversification exceeded even the company's own plans. International operations expanded. Solid glass bead technology was added to the company's well-established soluble silicate technology. By the start of 1980, the PQ Corporation and its affiliates had 40 plants in 14 countries and consolidated sales of $141 million. With products, plants, and people located around the world, PQ has come far from the days of Joseph Elkington's soap and candle manufacturing company. And now in its 150th anniversary year, the company is still growing 
still expanding in plants and people, developing even more useful products. 150 years of commitment, of ideas, of innovation, and most of all, of people. As former President Thomas W. Elkington once remarked, our business is made strong by the men and women who are in it and who are interested in making it work in every department of the company. For the PQ Corporation, our people and our yesterdays are still very much with us. They direct us, give character, force, and meaning to the present. lie in the strengths of individuals and how effectively they are able to pull together their total efforts to achieve results. PQ's basic product, sodium silicate, is made by taking sand and mixing it with soda ash, then heating this mixture in a high temperature furnace to produce a molten glass, which is either dissolved in water, hence the name water glass, or cooled to a solid ground to fine particles and sold as a powdered glass product. The company's reputation for product quality was built on these basic silicate products. The products from PQ's industrial chemicals division are used primarily to supply the nation's detergent industry in making catalysts for petroleum refining and as chemical intermediates. There are an almost unlimited number of applications and end uses for our basic soluble silicate products. And one of the most important, both for our country and PQ, involves energy, oil. Today, just about all of the easy to extract oil has been found. So the emphasis now is on new ways to get more oil, not only from new wells, but also from existing known oil reserves. What is needed to do this is new technology, new ideas on how to squeeze more oil out of existing fields. Contrary to what most people believe, oil does not collect in underground pools. It collects in tiny spaces in sandstone or other porous rock. It is trapped underground. The easiest way to get this oil out of the ground is through primary recovery. Underground pressure simply pushes the oil out through the well. But a lot of oil still remains trapped beneath the surface. Through secondary recovery methods, water is pumped into the ground washes through the rocks and releases some more of the trapped oil. Two main methods of recovering oil, one natural, one physical. Then, in the early 70s, when the price of oil skyrocketed, a third method became economically attractive. Tertiary or enhanced oil recovery involves the use of chemicals, and one of the most efficient chemicals is sodium silicate. Sodium silicate is pumped underground, Rocks are given a thorough scrubbing by the soap that is formed, and more oil, 30 to 50 percent more oil in fact, is released and pumped from the wells. For PQ, this development offers opportunities of staggering proportions, potentially equaling all of its current silicate sales simply in supplying this one new market. PQ is sharing its knowledge about tertiary oil recovery with silicates with domestic oil producers. In this way, PQ Corporation is contributing dramatically, not only to its own growth, but to satisfying our country's vital energy needs. From PQ's commodity industrial chemicals, a second major line of business evolved, specialty chemicals products. Today's specialty chemicals division is made up of three product groups. Specialty products including precipitated silicas and silica saws and gels, formulated laundry products, and polymer additives. One of the most important of the specialty products is a polymer additive named Q-Cell. Q-Cell microspheres are a product invented by PQ. 
the microspheres are in reality encapsulated air in the form of tiny hollow glass beads. They have a versatility that makes them one of our most remarkable products ever. Among many unusual uses for Q-cell, several critical ones involve the transportation industry. Q-cell microspheres are incorporated into molded parts to lighten vehicles. Airplanes, automobiles, trucks and boats are thus made more fuel efficient. These uses continue to grow in importance as our nation continues to wrestle with its energy shortage. Q-cell is also used in dent filling auto body compounds. The use of Q-cell as a sensitizer in explosives, a relatively new application, is significant in the fast growing market for safer explosives. At stake is more efficient minerals and energy production. At the other extreme, Q-cell is also used for fun in bowling balls where it allows manufacturers to make balls exactly the same size, but of varying weights. Q-cell, from airplanes to bowling balls, from auto repair to explosives, it's one of PQ's fastest growing and most useful specialty products. All of the products from PQ's industrial chemicals division and PQ's specialty chemicals division are made with one basic kind of furnace technology an entirely different kind of furnace and processing technology with scrap glass as raw material rather than sand and soda ash is involved in the production of PQ's third major product line. This is our glass sphere business, best exemplified in the products made by PQ's newest and largest subsidiary company, Potter's Industries. Nighttime, you're driving off the main roads. Traffic is light, it's late and it's dark. More than 50% of all traffic fatalities occur under those conditions. Today, throughout the world, highway authorities agree that road markings that reflect light can dramatically reduce nighttime accidents. And what is it that makes traffic lines reflect light? Millions and millions of tiny glass beads improving the highway environment to save lives. Potters also supplies glass beads for impact cleaning, finishing, and peening operations in metalworking, for plastics reinforcement, silver-coated beads for electronics, ink carrier beads for xerography, beads for hospital beds, which float burn patients on a cushion of air. In aerospace, communications, and medical fields, Potters has important influence. These are all markets that will continue to grow in the years to come. Potter's Industries. We're building on our past by making a commitment to the future. The PQ Corporation. It's a company in transition. A transition that started in the mid-60s. A transition that has changed us from a conservative company to the expanding international corporation PQ is today. Consider that just 10 years ago, PQ had just one affiliate, National Silicates Limited, and one foreign joint venture. Today, PQ and its affiliated companies have 42 plants worldwide. Currently, PQ has chemical plants and employees in Austria, Canada, Colombia, Pakistan, and Mexico. With the acquisition of the Potter's group of companies in 1978, PQ's international horizons were broadened significantly. Potters was the world's first and is now the largest producer of glass beads in the U.S. and has foreign affiliates in Canada, the United Kingdom, Germany, Mexico, Brazil, Japan, Australia, and France. The PQ Corporation today is an international company. And although the company plans to expand and diversify in this country and abroad in years ahead, PQ will continue to do what it does best. And what we do best is make and sell safe, useful, and profitable chemical products and service the customers who depend on them. 150 years of commitment, resourcefulness, ideas, and most important of all, people. People all over the world. People who have given PQ their energies, their strength, and their minds. People.
EQ people. As Joseph Elkington put it in 1851, dwelling under a proper concern for the best things.